Okay, this video is uh, about installing an upgraded component speaker system into the 2014 on Toyota Igo and the Citroen and Peugeot clones. That's the Citroen C1 Mark II and the Peugeot 108. Um, the vehicles come as standard with uh, this Pioneer head unit, uh, which seems to be quite good quality. And it comes with a kind of component speaker system. There's a tweeter mounted in the dash, and then down in the door, there's a, a woofer. But the, the standard Toyota parts um, are fairly low quality. So that is the, the door speaker, very small magnet, very lightweight. This is an upgraded component. So this is a JBL 607C speaker and what we're going to do is we're going to replace the the door woofer with the JBL part and the JPL component kit also comes with um, an upgraded tweeter so we've we've got a, a better quality uh, tweeter and a crossover unit so the head unit output connects to the crossover unit and then we've got connections to the woofer and the tweeter. Now the way Toyota do things is that they take the head unit feed up to the tweeter and then from the tweeter they take uh, wires down to the woofer in the door. So up at the tweeter we've got a connector with four terminations, two from the head unit coming in and then two go off down to the woofer. So we're going to have to locate the, the crossover unit up under the dashboard. The door mounting of the woofer um, is fairly straightforward. Um, we're going to use an adapter ring and we'll talk about that more later. Locating the tweeter um, is a little bit more involved. We've, we've got various options. Um, the tweeter is smaller in diameter than the, uh, the standard tweeter. Um, the kit comes with uh, a mounting cup. So we could, for example, mount the tweeter on top of the grill we could mount it on the A-post or using a little 90 degree uh, adapter we could mount the tweeter on the A-post but facing back into the car or on top of the grill facing into the car so we've got various mounting op options if you do decide to mount a tweeter on the A-post be aware there is wiring uh, for an airbag that runs up the front of the A-post and into the headlining, so be careful if you drill into that. Now I actually want to keep things standard, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the tweeter uh, behind the existing grill, so the, the, the vehicle looks entirely standard. Uh, so in addition to the, to the uh, component speaker kit. We also need a couple of things to assist us with the wiring. Um, I, I want to keep the wiring standard so uh, we have a little adapter here which connects the standard uh, Toyota wiring at the woofer to terminations that go onto the back of the JBL speakers and up by the tweeter there is a four terminal Toyota connector and I've uh, source these four terminal connectors you can buy them on eBay from suppliers in China and so forth and what you're looking for is uh, a, a connector that looks like that it's got four terminals and it it may not be advertised as suitable for the iGo it might, it might say Toyota Corolla Toyota Tundra or whatever Toyota use these on a lot of their vehicles for the tweeter connection um, so what we're going to do then is we're going to start off by removing the door trim. We'll replace the Toyota 
woofer with the, the JBL unit. Uh, we'll put a little bit of sand dending in the doors and then we'll move on and we'll look at how to locate the tweeter behind the grill and make the necessary wiring connections. Okay, so what you need when you do this is you need a good set of trim tools. In particular, make sure you have some uh, plastic trim tools. Try not to use screwdrivers and so on to pry the trim back. The trim plastic's quite soft and you'll likely damage it. And the other little tip is try and do this on a warm day when the plastic is warm and a little bit softer, more pliable. If you do it in cold weather, you're more likely to snap or break something. When the, the plastic's warmer, it's more flexible and things come apart and go back together uh, a little bit more easily. So we'll cut there and we'll move on to uh, the next part of the video, which is to take off the, the passenger door trim and mount the woofer in the door. Okay, so what we're going to do now is remove the inner door trim. Start by removing the uh, electric window switch. And there's a small connector on the back with a locking tab. So we remove that, put that out of the way. Um, and the door trim is retained by a screw behind that blanking plug there and one or two screws behind this cover plate here. So we need to remove those screws first. So just pry off the screw cover there. And we'll pry down the cover plate there. One screw there, and on this model, just one screw there. Okay. And now we can remove the trim, which is just held on by some uh, pads. And we start by gripping under the door. There's a little cutout just down there. And then we have to disconnect the two cables to the lock and the latch. We pull the cable out around, rotate through 90 degrees and lift. Rotate through 90 degrees and lift. And then the trim is free. Now we might have one or two uh, of these white retainers that stay in the door. Have to take that out and put it back into the door card and I think I saw one drop onto the floor, so we'll sort those out later. Disconnect the electrical connection to it. and then remove three 10 millimeter screws.
and here's the original speaker. So this is the JBL replacement. Um, obviously we can't mount it directly. We need an adapter ring which provides us with three mounting points. Okay, so we're going to use the adapter ring. We need to obviously take uh, a feed through to the uh, terminals on the woofer. So what I've done is uh, drilled a hole about eight millimeters in the adapter ring and what we'll do is feed the woofer connection, the woofer lead through the hole. Okay, so we can connect to the back of the woofer. Before I mount the woofer, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of sound deadening in the doors. Um, I've got two self adhesive sound deadening pads. Um, there's a crash bar runs across the middle of the door. I'm going to put one below the crash bar and one above on the, the outer skin of the door. Okay, it's a little bit difficult because we've got restricted access through here um, and we, what we can do is we can very carefully remove um, some of the trim here. So this is a, um, a protective membrane, a waterproof membrane. It's held on by some mastic and what we want to do is very carefully just ease, ease it away from Ease it away from the mass mastic. Be careful because it's quite thin. And that will give us a little bit more access into the door. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll start off with the upper one. So I'm going to peel the backing paper off here. I'm going to feed it up and stick it to the inside of the door skin up there. Okay, so that's pretty much in place and what we'll do is I have a small foam roller and I'm just going to gently roll it to ensure it's um, adhered to the outer door skin. So run the roller over there. Okay, so that's one above the crash bar. I'm going to put another one below the crash bar. And what this will do is it will stop um, any drum skin effect from the outer skin of the door. It will stop the, the door outer skin vibrating. And we put that in place. Okay, and then we roll it on using the foam roller. Do now is return the, the membrane. Okay. And we'll 
just smooth that on with the foam roller. Okay, so we've got those deadening pads in place. Um, what we can do now is fit the adapter ring. An important thing that we have to do is to check that the protrusion of the speaker behind and in front of where it mounts on the door skin is about the same as the original Toyota speaker, yeah? So obviously we don't want this going further back than the original because then when the electric window is retracted the glass may hit the, or part of the mechanism may hit the magnet at the back. Similarly at the front, if the projection at the front is more than the original Toyota part then the, the, the door trim won't fit back on properly. But this one is pretty much spot on. It's uh, pretty much the same front and back as the original part, so we're safe to put to put it on to mount it in place. Now if I just screw this back over the aperture in the door, um, there's a good chance of some vibration or chatter between this plastic frame and the metal door skin. So what I'm going to do is I've got some two millimeter thick self adhesive foam strip and what we're going to do is we're going to run that around the we're going to run that around the aperture for the adapter ring to sit against can fit the adapter ring in place. There's the um, original Toyota connector from the door wiring loom. So what we're going to do is we're going to position this so that the um, we'll position it there so the the uh, adapter to the speaker comes out through that hole there we can connect it uh, to the Toyota wiring loom. So we're going to position the adapter like that and we're going to be using the original screws that we took out a moment ago so, yeah that's probably better yeah that's going to be better like that so we'll put it there just very gently um, tighten these okay do not over tighten they just go into a plastic insert so it's very little torque required just to sit them down so that adapter ring now is sitting on that foam gasket it's not going to vibrate and we can mount the speaker on there um, now what I'm going to do is uh, I could actually use some foam again uh, around the edge there where the speaker sits against the adapter but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put some silicone around, some clear silicone and we'll, we'll silicone it into place, okay? So this is normal 
some exterior grade clear silicon. All we need is just to run a thin bead around the edge for the speaker to sit against, the speaker frame to sit against. Obviously don't overdo it, you don't want to get silicone on the speaker cone itself. Now there are also an additional four holes in this adapter which are made for um, other kinds of speakers, so it's a universal adapter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squirt some silicone into those four unused holes just to seal them up. And that fourth one. A little bit of silicon in there. We can now connect the uh, speaker adapter, adapter lead to the terminals. Uh, the terminals are two sizes, a large terminal, about a, a 6mm terminal and a 3mm terminal. Uh, the larger terminal is always the positive. And the adapters come ready made with the correct uh, fittings on them. So we'll put the larger one on first, the lock in place and then the smaller one there. Okay, and we're all set to put the speaker into position. So we'll mount it like that, there's the mounting holes. We've got some small self-tapper screws there. go into pre-drilled holes in the adapter. And then the lo lower and last screw. Just gently tighten those. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just wipe away any of that excess silicon that's come out from around there. Okay, so the speaker is now mounted and we can um, connect it to the Toyota uh, door loom, the, the, the woofer supply to the door loom. 
So if we snap those two together, okay. Now we've got a, a connector here that can rattle about. So what we need to do is we need to uh, stick that in place. We'll use a, a sticky pad to, to fix that in place in a moment. But let's just see if it works. Check it's electrically sound. So what we'll do is we'll connect up the uh, So that's working. So what we'll do now is we'll stick this back in place. Uh, we'll refit the door card. So we'll stop there for a moment uh, while we prepare the door card for refitting. Okay, so what we've done is we've um, put a little bit of felt around the connector to the woofer and we've checked all of the waterproof membranes in place and we've checked that we've got all the white trim clips in place on the back of the door card and we've actually put a little bit of extra acoustic felt behind the door card itself. So what we do now is just pop the the door trim back into place. Uh, what we have to make sure we do is to put these in correctly. The, the top white one um, is for the locking mechanism, the lower green one is, to, is, the, is the door release to uh, open and shut the door. And what we do is we uh, basically turn these through 90 degrees, drop the ball end into the little slot on the lever and then clip the cable outer into the appropriate slot. So uh, let's do that. That's the first thing we have to do. So we do the lower green one, drop the ball end in, clip the outer into the door card, and on the lock mechanism, clip the white outer. So they're now both in place, and we can clip the door the door card back. We start at the top. Okay. And then work down. It's our electric window connector. And it's now snugly in place and what we do is replace the screws that we took out earlier so the screw behind the door release handle now it's very important not to over tight over time these they just go into a, a soft plastic block so we just nip them up quite gently And then the other one went behind this cover, behind the door pull. Again, do not over tighten. Okay, and that's fine. And we'll drop that into place and clip it back. Replace our electric window switch. Electrical connector back. And that simply presses in. Now what's really important is to check that the 
Uh, the locking mechanism, the door release works properly because you don't want to close the door and then find out you can't open it. So what we do is we'll use a screwdriver, we'll pull on the release lever first, we'll use a screwdriver to close the, the locking mechanism and then if we pull on this it should release like that, okay? So that's, that's done, uh, we'll once again just check we've got sound and we'll check the electric window operation. Okay, so I can hear sound coming out of that speaker and we'll just make sure the window moves up and down without hitting anything. So as far as the door's concerned then, that's job done and we can now move on to the dashboard tweeter. Okay, so we'll look at uh, now installing the tweeter and also the crossover unit. The crossover unit is going to have to go up in the dash underneath where the tweeter locates, but luckily there's, there's plenty of room there so we can fit the, the crossover unit in quite easily. I'm going to go for an install that looks completely standard, so we're going to mount the speaker underneath the dashboard grill. Okay, so the first thing is to pry up the the dashboard grill for the tweeter, that's quite easy. We use a, a plastic trim tool with a, a fairly sharp edge there. If we just pry under at the front, it will lift. And it hooks under at the back, so we just lift it up and forward, okay? And you'll see the tweeter unit underneath. And here are the four terminals coming from the uh, coming from the head unit and going to the tweeter. There's a little locking tab on that, so we squeeze that locking tab in. These can be pretty, pretty stubborn. We'll squeeze that locking tab in. Turn it the other way. Okay, that's better. Okay, so there are the four connecting terminals. So on the left hand side of the car, uh, the pink and the purple uh, are coming from the head unit. The pink is the positive, the purple is the negative. And the yellow and the black go down to the woofer in the door. The black is the woofer positive, the yellow is the woofer negative. But what I'll do in the video, I will insert a circuit diagram for both the left and the right so you can see the wiring colours and you know where to connect the woofer and the tweeter. So this is the four terminal connector that we need to connect to. Now what we can do when we connect the uh, crossover unit up is we could actually just chop this connector off and we could put our own connectors on. We could use bullet connectors or spade connectors or even a one of those little uh, screw type connecting blocks, but I actually prefer to keep things um, The connectors on the car as standard as possible and that's why I, I bought this mating uh, Connector from eBay this four terminal connector which will connect onto that and allow me to connect my uh, Tweeter and crossover and so forth. Okay, and I've made up I've connected some wires with about the right colors to it um, to make it all logical and sensible. So that is the connector we have to deal with in a moment, but before then, let's take a look at the tweeter. Okay. So this is the speaker grill, and the tweeter clips into the back of it. The tweeter is retained by three little plastic tabs, so it, it comes out quite, quite easily. So that's the grill unit and that's the tweeter unit, okay? And you'll see the four terminals on the tweeter and you'll see that, for example, the left two terminals connect together and the tweeter is actually then fed off from the left two terminals and the right two terminals, okay? Two terminals because we've got uh, wires going down to the roof and the door. But 
if you look at the circuit diagram that I'll insert into the video to perhaps become a little more clear. Now there is a small electrolytic capacitor there inserted into the tweeter circuit and that acts as a high pass filter. That means that only the high frequencies get fed through to the tweeter. So it's a kind of a very crude crossover. Okay, if we fed uh, the full output of the head unit directly to this tweeter, it would very quickly blow up. Okay, so that is the uh, that's the factory original tweeter, and it clips into there. Now I want to put my tweeter into into that uh, aperture. Okay, this is about thirty-five millimeters in diameter. The tweeter that comes with this JBL setup is about 30 millimetres in diameter, so there is a, a discrepancy. It will be loose, so we need to figure out how we can mount it in there. Um, so let's look at mounting the tweeter in there. Okay, so here is the 30 millimetre tweeter, and you can see that would rattle around in there. Uh, not a good fit at all. However, the JBL kit does come with this mounting cup, and the mounting cup is actually about 35 millimeters in diameter. It's about the same diameter as the original factory tweeter. So we, we've got the option then to take our tweeter, install it in its mounting cup, Okay, we put it in there and it locks into place and then we can insert the tweeter into that aperture. So I'm going to go away now and I'm going to put a little bit of hot melt glue just to retain that and then a bead of silicone around it. And it will actually be the silicone that holds it in place. The hot melt is just is just temporary while the silicone goes off. You can't rely on the hot melt glue on this kind of plastic. It, it won't bond very well. So it's just to hold it in place whilst the bead of silicone around there um, uh, sets and holds it firmly in place. So I'm going to go away and do that now. Okay, so I've just um, mounted that tweeter in, in the in the tweeter cup that was supplied with the JBL kit. I've used a little bit of hot melt glue in three positions just to anchor it in place, and then uh, I put a bead of silicone around. Obviously, it'll take the silicone uh, a couple of hours to to harden and hold it in place. Don't rely on the hot melt glue, uh, particularly with these softer plastics. The adhesion is pretty poor and if you rely on that after, after a couple of weeks the tweeter would drop out. So the silicon is much better and will hold it firmly in place. It's well located in place um, and so that's ready to go in. Um, these wires are pre-made. Uh, we've got the positive and negative to the tweeter. So all we need to do now is to take our crossover unit and um, connect it, connect it up to the um, to the TO2 wiring. So we, this is our crossover unit. We've got uh, inputs from the head unit. In, in this case, that's the brown and the uh, red wire there. We've got uh, two outputs to the woofer. They are the yellow and the black, and they go off back down to the four terminal connector. And then we've got two wires here, which go to the um, tweeter. Okay, so that's all set to connect up, mate up to that connector, and we can stow it under the dashboard. Okay. One of the things you'll notice on this crossover is that it has a little push button switch here, and it can switch between zero to db and 2db okay plus 2db plus 2db is about 60 percent so by pressing this button in we boost the treble by about 60 percent so we send more signal to the tweeter by about 60 percent okay you need to do that when the tweeters are mounted basically not in a line with the, with the ear. So if I was to mount the tweeters on the A post here and angle them toward me, I would probably use the zero dB setting. Because I'm mounting them in the dash, 
um, then I'm probably going to use the 2 dB setting. Okay. So all we need to do then is to is to connect these two connectors together, and we need to tuck the crossover unit away down under the dash. And there's plenty of space down underneath there. Um, and in fact, there's kind of a bit of a shelf on the the right here. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of this acoustic foam, making sure that button is pressed in. Um, and I'm going to wrap it around the crossover unit like that. And then I'm going to use a, a large cable tie, a large tie wrap, to um, retain the, the felt. Okay, so we'll just do that. And we've got the wires free there ready to connect to the, to the tweeter. So that, that's connected up nicely. Let's check that button is in the depressed position for plus 2 dB and we'll clip off the excess cable tie okay and then we can connect together a four pin connector and we can tuck that away uh, down behind the dashboard there So what I'll do in a moment, when the um, silicone is, is a little uh, harder, it's still very soft at the moment, um, I'll connect those two up to the, to the tweeter wires and insert the, the grill back into the dash. We can actually check it all works. Okay. Let's connect these up temporarily. terminal is the positive one and they clip together and that one clips together okay and let's just check everything works so we'll turn the vehicle power on what you've been watching and listening to each week. This is the Hits UK chart, the most accurate chart out there. We're getting into the swing of it now. I really cannot believe I'm getting to count down these songs with you on the Hits UK chart. Genuinely yep. living. And that's working fine. Uh, I can hear sound from the tweeter. Sound from the woofer down in the door. So we're all good to go. So we'll wait till the silicon goes hard. We'll pop the uh, tweeter grill back into the dashboard and the uh, job's been completed.